Digico theatre-specific software offers a unique set of programming tools for the theatre market. It operates quite differently to our live software. So we're going to have a look at the features, look at how you would start building a session, and then from basic all the way through to advanced, have a look at the features and how you might use them. If you don't have access to a T console and want to follow along, grab a copy of our offline software off the website where you can enable the T features for free. And I'm going to be demonstrating today on an SD12T, but don't forget that no matter which of our T consoles you're on, the principle of operation is just the same. So what are the differences between live software and theatre software? Well, all of the processing options on the consoles, the EQ, the dynamics, and if you're on a Quantum, the Mustard and Spice Rack, they're the same no matter which version of software you're running. But in the Matrix, we add nodal delays. So this is the addition of individual delays on each of the crosspoint matrix points. And this allows sound designers to position sound, provide localization cues based on both level and timing data. In the options panel, there's a whole new set of options allow you to customize the way the console operates in theater mode. If we open up the console options, you can see on the right hand side, there's a theater button. And this gives us access to the specific setup functions that we need to set or want to set for theater operation. At the top is the operation of the optional button. So in live mode, the optional button operates channels and gangs mode, but in theater uh, setup, we generally want it to run our exceptions, our queue update mode, so we can flip between it. Uh, we can change this at any given time or put this on a macro, but generally in theater, this would be left in queue update mode. The next section is our auto update exclusions. This allows us to set per section how the console operates in auto update mode. And when we make a change, is that change gonna be written to one queue or to all queues? Automatically, of course, because that's what auto update does. But we can choose per section how we'd like the auto update function to write the data, either to one queue or to all queues. When we're dealing with players, we have another scope that allows us to change how uh, the differences between players are handled and which elements of the channel are gonna be different between players. We have our relative cues function, the ability to hide and hide our join leave buttons for control group membership, and this is really important, and we'll cover this in the video. Uh, our fader off color, there are some work surface cues that allow you to change the LCD button color depending on the status of the channel, whether it's unpatched or whether it is closed, so muted or faded down. And we can limit the range on a rotary uh, for the delay settings for the channels and for the matrix down to 255 milliseconds, which gives us millisecond accurate control on a rotary. We can still type in values bigger than 255 milliseconds, but in terms of accurate control on a rotary, uh, it's a much better option because in theater, it's unlikely you'll be using delays bigger than uh, 255 milliseconds. The way we program our VCAs or our control groups changes. So instead of using the normal join leave functions, we provide a much more visual um, interface to allow you to program the flow of control group changes and VCA memberships as the show goes on. But primarily what we're interested in is the snapshot data or in theaters we call cues. Now in live mode, each individual snapshot really has no relationship to another. These are a set of individual snapshots described by the name of settings in channels. But in theater mode, there is a much bigger queue list to start with, running into hundreds of queues. And there is an ongoing relationship between the data in those queues. So our theater functions, our programming tools using auto update and all of the associated commands allows us a really good workflow to manage the data from both rehearsal point of view and from running a shows. Look out for part two, where we continue to look at Digico theater software.